Well, good evening and welcome to the 66th annual meeting of Cypher Federal Credit Union. Tonight's meeting is hosted both in person and online. Our uh, in-person guests are here with us at the Richard E. Berry Educational Support Center in Cyprus, and our online guests are uh, attending via Zoom. We have members logged in online who are watching from locations across our community. And to all of our members who have taken the time to attend in either form, uh, we want to extend a warm welcome and thank you for participating. In order to open the annual meeting, I need to confirm that a quorum of members are present. And where is Secretary Ms. Wilson? Ms. Wilson, I did verify it. Hopefully you did too. Thank you so much. Um, we have a quorum of members present. I'd like to officially call to order this annual meeting of Cypher Federal Credit Union. And I'd also like to welcome the members of Prairie View Federal Credit Union, a division of Cypher FCU. And we'll be telling you more about that exciting development that occurred in 2022 over the course of our report today. We are happy to welcome you to our annual meeting. You will hear more about the, those initiatives that are coming up in a little bit later. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the Cypher FCU Board of Directors and our Supervisory Committee who are here this evening. When I call your name, if you'd please raise your hand. Ms. Gail Parker, Board Chair. Ms. Dr. Debbie Emery, Board Vice Chair. Ms. Irwan Wilson, Board Secretary. Ms. Tina Morgan, Board Treasurer. Mr. Harold Rowe, Director. Mr. Chuck Brandman, Director. And Mr. Noel Yapez. I'd like to introduce our Supervisory Committee members. Mr. Gary Kinninger is our Committee Chairman, and he could not be with us tonight, but uh, we would do want to recognize his service. He's been uh, in that role for many years and does a great job. Ms. Lori Baker. And Ms. Tamika Ramsey, and Ms. Ramsey will, has graciously agreed to deliver the Supervisory Committee report coming up in a little bit later. Ms. Elaine Schaefer, and Ms. Reagan Pugh, front row. I'd also like to introduce the Credit Union's executive leadership team. When I call your name, if you would please stand. Valerie Perlman, Vice President of HR and Compliance, who is actually at an HR conference this week. Sean Orthover, Vice President of Marketing and Business Development at the back. Georgette Salazar, Vice President of Member Experience. Kathy Lachelais, Vice President of Lending and Loss Prevention. Federico Castillo, Vice President of Finance and Accounting. Shane Perkins, Vice President of Information Technology. And that's our team. During this evening's presentations, if you have any questions that are not answered during the course of our annual reports, we have a room full of knowledgeable experts who can help get the information that you want. If you are online, you can submit a question through the meeting chat feature during this evening's report, and they will be addressed during the new business portion of the agenda. Last but not least, if you are an employee or manager of Cypher FCU, would you please stand so that we can recognize you? These hardworking folks make actually the whole credit union work, and so we greatly appreciate them. I also see a member of our CFISD trustees, uh, Mr. Tom Jackson. Can you stand and be recognized? <laughs> our first order of business this evening is the approval of last year's annual meeting minutes. The in-person attendees received a copy of the meeting minutes as they arrived and checked in. Additionally, a digital copy has been posted to our website at cypherfcu.org forward slash meeting, the same lo location where our online attendees signed in for this meeting. In order to document the approval of last year's minutes, I'm going to request a motion to approve them. In-person attendees can move for approval by raising your hand and stating, I make a motion to approve the minutes, or online by typing motion to approve or second. A CFFCU team member will document the name of the member making the motion and seconding for the minutes of this year's proceeding. If there are no additions or corrections to the minutes, I need a motion to approve last year's minutes as presented. Ms. Lori Baker is the first, second, and also a former 
member of our board of directors. Thank you for being here. If there are no additions, we've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion passes and the minutes of last year's meeting are approved. Now, please help me welcome Miss Gail Parker, chair of our board of directors, who will deliver the board of directors report. Good evening, everyone. This down just a little bit. Is that better? Okay. Good evening. It's an honor to be with you tonight to deliver this year's board of directors report. This past year marked our 66th year since the credit union's founding by 10 employees of the then Cypress Fairbanks Consolidated School District. What started in a shoebox inside an office desk drawer at Cy Fair High School has evolved and grown tremendously. Today, membership at SciFair FCU has passed 24,500 accounts, and we ended the year with assets of $332 million. Despite strong growth and an ever-evolving landscape for financial services, the credit union has held fast to its founding values while adapting to provide state-of-the-art services for CFFCU members. Originally founded to serve employees of the school district and their families, today SciFair FCU membership is open to anyone that lives, works, or worships in Harris or Waller County and their family members as well. <clears throat> Serving on the board of directors of a credit union is a unique, it's very unique from other financial institutions in a number of ways, but most notably because as a nonprofit cooperative, each member of the board are volunteers. As members of CFFCU, we are elected by the membership to represent your interests in the credit union's policy making, available services, long-term strategic planning, and ensuring that the credit union operates within safety and soundness standards through proper oversight. Following the president's report tonight, you will hear from Ms. Tamika Ramsey, a member of CFFCU's Supervisor Committee, who will report further on the credit union's audit and regular regulatory compliance results over the past year. <clears throat> In my report to members last year, I touched on the credit union's winding down of a 10-year plan called SciFair 2022. Started in 2013, SciFair 2022 established the roadmap for a decade of growth and modernization. Some of the objectives of that plan included sustaining and growing the credit union's market relevancy, expanding services for members, increasing operating efficiencies, and adopting a leading edge technology posture across CFFCU. Another significant tentpole of the credit union SciFair 2022 vision included our branch transformation initiatives, which started in 2018 and concluded with the launch of our Town Lake Financial Center in the spring of 2020. <clears throat> the results achieved from the past 10-year growth plan are pretty exciting. Here are just a few of the key accomplishments that resulted. At the end of 2012, SciFair Federal Credit Union had $183 million in total assets. As the credit union implemented its 10-year plan for growth, modernization, innovation, and hospitality caliber service experiences for members, the credit union's assets increased by $149 million, ending at $332 million as of this past December. And y'all, that is an increase of 81.4%. CFFC's used total loans outstanding at the end of 2012 were $97.6 million. By year-end 2022, this had grown to $215.4 million, and that is an increase of 121%. CFFCU has always been financially strong, but we have worked diligently to build our capital reserves. Following the 2009 Great Recession, the credit union's board and executive team note of the ex y'all will relate to this of the significant impact that can occur from external economic forces and made growth of our capital reserves a high priority 
CFSCU's strong financials, conservative management, and ability to absorb financial downturns or unexpected disruptions to earnings is one of the main reasons our members trust CFFCU with their finances, and I know my family does. In fact, in periods of economic uncertainty, CFSCU has consistently surged in deposit growth as our members sought refuge from economic headwinds elsewhere. Increasing our capital reserves has played a crucial role in our annual operating strategies and financial performance goals over this past decade. The result of these efforts has been a doubling of CFFCU's reserves, growing from 14 million to 28.5 million, and that is an increase of 104%. With an additional focus on increased lending to CFFCU members, expansion of our loan product offerings, competitive pricing, and advertising increases across multiple channels, our average loan balance per member has increased by 97% over the past decade. At the end of 2012, CFFCU's average loan balance was $9,544, and that was about $4,000 less than the industry average for our asset size. However, as a result of the credit union's emphasis on expanded lending to CFFCU's members and earning a greater share of their borrowing business, CFFCU's average loan balance per member is now $18,803. That's $1,200 higher than the industry peer average of $17,576 per member. So what lies ahead? With the completion of our 10-year vision, your credit union board and executive leadership team have completed two multi-day planning workshops to continue our momentum in the future. In order to stay in front of the planning process, the first of these sessions was held in August of 2021. The second was held just a few months ago in February, and I'm happy to report that these were very productive sessions and work is already underway on many of the key initiatives which resulted. Here are a few of the key items that we're working on for our members. CFFCU has applied to be, a to be designated as a Community Development Financial Institution. It's also known as CDFI by the U.S. Department of Treasury. Our organization has long believed that we have had the opportunity and the responsibility to be a powerful force for good in our community. We come from different backgrounds, different starting places, different challenges, and sometimes we speak different languages. But we believe that every person shares a common aspiration to achieve more, to have greater financial security, and to provide for their hopes and dreams of their families. As a CDFI designated credit union, SciFair FCU certifies this commitment through our lending and service delivery in underserved areas and to borrowers with lower household incomes. Based on preliminary data and consultation with knowledgeable industry organizations, we have a high degree of confidence that CFFCU will be awarded the CDFI designation. In addition to documenting this commitment against high standards, the CDFI designation will also allow the credit union to apply for CDFI grant awards. CDFI grants can be used to strengthen loan reserves for lending to low-income borrowers, for expanding services in underdeserved areas, underserved areas, for financial education and a variety of other ways that invest in the development of our community. For SciFair FCU, these additional resources will further our work to listen, sympathize, empathize, and empower people along their, their own personal financial journey. The board and the credit union's management team are in the early design and cost gathering stage for updates to our Skinner Financial Center. Launched in 2008, our Skinner Financial Center is now 15 years old, and that made me feel old. <laughs> Planned updates include improved line of sight of our consultation areas off the main lobby, a new video wall, 
two new tech bars with bar stool seating and cell phone charging stations, a commercial desk for our members with small businesses, integration of ITM technology in our transaction services area, and an upgraded hospitality station with refreshments for our members when they visit this location. And I bet it includes lollipops for the kids. Our Skinner Road location houses a large safe deposit box area which operates near 95% occupancy. Since we consolidated this service in 2018 and 19, and the safe, depo safe deposit box services will continue to be offered at this location. Our Prairie View Financial Center is also slated to be remodeled during two 2023. Final bids have been received for the planned construction and contracts are expected to be executed in May. Updates for the 1600 square foot branch include relocation of the drive through ATM and replacement with a state-of-the-art drive through ITM. Following the remodel, Prairie View Federal Credit Union and CFFCU members will be able to continue using the machine as an ATM for routine self-serve transactions, but will also gain the functionality of video banking with a member of our Digital Studios team. This should prove to be a game changer for our residents of Prairie View who do not have access to any other financial service provider within the city limits much less assisted service from a live teller without ever getting out of the car, kind of like the Jetsons. So this change will also add Saturday service hours for visitors to our PV um, FCU Financial Center. Okay, as I near the completion of my second one-year term as board chair and my eighth year on the Credit Union's Board of Directors, I want to end my remarks by noting the sense of satisfaction and pride that I feel and I have heard expressed by every other board member, honestly, to be a part of what SciFair Federal Credit Union does. Everyone who is a part of the CFFCU family, from the volunteer board to the management team and through to every employee, everyone consistently aspires to make a positive difference in the lives around them and to achieve the highest possible standards of quality, value, service, and impact. And this aspiration to quality is consistently producing award-winning results. And now it's a little bit of brag time. A year ago, I had the opportunity to share with you that CFFCU's president and CEO had been recently awarded the highest global recognition of the credit union industry, the Distinguished Services Award from the World Council of Credit Unions. Additionally, just a few months before we gathered last year, CFFCU was also awarded the Large Business of the Year Award from the Cypher Houston Chamber of Commerce and five first place Pinnacle Marketing Awards from the Cornerstone Credit Union League. This year, I can proudly report that the credit union continued this award-winning trend with a record-breaking nine Pinnacle Marketing Awards, a Platinum Marcom Award recognizing us for the All the Things You Do TV campaign, was voted the best credit union in Sci Fair by the readers of Living Magazine, and another huge honor, our president CEO Cameron Dickey was recently awarded the Credit Union's Professional of the Year Award from the Cornerstone League. Quite an accomplishment. <laughs> SciFair Federal Credit Union has a clear vision to write good into the life stories of those around us, and it is fulfilling that purpose with award-winning quality, strong financial performance, and a commitment to help the residents of our community thrive that is 66 years old and counting. In closing, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to represent the Credit Union's membership on the Board of Directors. I'm proud to be a part of a long line of engaged, deliberative, and experienced leaders who have contributed to the success of SciFair FCU and believe that the future is bright for our credit union. Thank you. I would now like to ask Mr. Cameron Dickey, our president and CEO of SciFair Credit Union, to deliver his president's report. Thank you very much, Gail.
As Ms. Parker alluded to in the Board of Directors report, Cypher FCU has had a very productive year and helped thousands of CFSU members to take new steps towards their desired financial future, to recover from moments of unexpected crisis, and sometimes to take their first steps along their financial journey. In each instance, we have had the opportunity to listen, collaborate, provide knowledgeable expertise, welcome them with hospitality, show them genuine interest and empathy, and appreciate every person that we've encountered along the way. Looking back at our 2022 financial performance, I'm pleased to report that the credit union performed well and showed positive growth in key areas of the organization. While CFFCU saw a contraction in member deposits, the credit union grew by a little over 500 net new memberships over the course of the year and achieved big gains in lending and refinancing of loans from members to lower household expenses. I'll provide additional detail on total loan growth in just a moment. As of December 31st, the credit union closed the year with net income of $2.29 million and exceeds the threshold for capital reserves to be considered well capitalized by the National Credit Union Administration, who is our regulator. Taking a look at the 13 month trends in just a few of these categories, for assets, the credit union's assets hit a high point in March of last year with $346 million and then decreased over the remainder of the year. The change is subtle, but it's important to note that it's tied to deposit growth, which we'll talk about in just a moment. As of December 31st, the credit union closed the year at $332 million. For monthly net income, we saw variances throughout the year, but with profitable results in each month. Two variables that are represented in the results is the effect of 31-day months versus 30-day months on the credit union's net income. Typically, because loan interest income is a primary source of income for the credit union, the credit union's fixed costs are offset by one day of additional interest income each month where there are 31 days. An additional variable reflected throughout the year was approximately $575,000 in one-time revenues resulting from repayment of membership capital that was held in Southwest Corporate Credit Union in 2009 when that organization was liquidated due to the mortgage security crisis and Great Recession. These refunds were achieved by our federal regulator, the National Credit Union Administration, who has sought to hold responsible some of the large banks that developed and sold mortgage-backed securities with misleading or inflated credit quality ratings. The repayments received by the credit union over the past few years do not yet equal the total amount that was charged off in 2009 However, it is a significant portion. Under loan growth, as I mentioned a moment ago, the credit union saw strong loan growth throughout the year with total loans outstanding growing in 11 out of 12 months. By year end, net loan growth totaled approximately $29 million or 15.68%, which is substantially above the peer value. To give some context for that number, I would note that the credit union funded over $80 million last year in borrowings and loans for members, and $29 million is the net growth. So approximately $51 million are loan repayments that come into the credit union to pay down and pay off loans with the credit union. That means that our team has to be working all the time to make sure that we're helping members and making sure that those loans are coming to the credit union. Under our NCUA net worth between the end of 2019 and April of 2022, the credit union saw record-breaking deposit growth with nearly $83 million in new deposits. While this is representative of the trust our members have for SIFAIR FCU, this level of deposit growth had the effect of driving the credit union's net worth ratio down from 9.45% to 7.58% in March of 2021 because assets are used in the denominator of that calculation. This was still above the 7% threshold to be considered well capitalized by the National Credit Union Administration. However, the board and senior management teams have worked to increase capital reserves back above 9% to 
provide adequate cushion for economic downturns or temporary disruptions to earnings like we saw during the COVID-19 pandemic. I am pleased to report that the credit union ended the year at 8.60% net worth, and as of the most recent month end of March 31st, 2023, the credit union's net worth is 9.43%, which is very strong. Loans had a very low level of loan delinquency and charge-offs over the past year. While we saw a small increase between June and August of last year, our ratio for combined delinquency and charge-offs is in the low 0.70% range and is below the typical 1% industry standard for good credit quality. I'd like to review a few of the achievements that the credit union obtained during the last year. Cypher FCU rolled out a new tagline this past year, a simple but significant phrase, how are you? The tagline was launched to employees, members, board and committee members about a year ago and is being integrated into promotions and member communications throughout 2023. This new tagline was created to develop a new vocabulary for principles that the credit union has stood for since its founding over 66 years ago. How are you? How can we help? What is going on in your life at this moment? Is it a moment of crisis? How can we help? Is it a moment of celebration and aspiration? We're ready to cheer with you and help you reach the next rung on your ladder. This simple phrase has fostered a fresh focus on the lives and needs of our members, civility and compassion in the workplace, and putting empathy at the forefront of each interaction with each person we interact with. We also, excitingly, had the opportunity to partner and merge with Prairie View Federal Credit Union, joining forces, merging together to ensure continued services for the residents, students, and university staff in Prairie View. Excitingly, excitingly this merger looks different than most other mergers, where many times a large organization will come in and close and take away the history and story of the other organization. Instead, Prairie View FCU now operates as a division of Cypher FCU and is maintaining its own unique identity and connection to the Prairie View community. Founded in 1937 at the end of the Great Depression by 16 employees of Prairie View College, the credit union is the only financial institution in a seven mile radius of Prairie View and has a rich history of volunteer leadership on its board, supervisory committee, and credit committee. At Cypher FCU, we believe that stories should be nurtured, added to, and enter new chapters. Services have been expanded, and we have been able to do some fun things to reach, to increase the reach and impact of Prairie View FCU. Things like our brand new purple debit card. The purple debit card is our way of uh, essentially emulating our school spirit debit card program, where 12 cents of every transaction benefits our booster clubs at our area high schools. We're in the process of doing something a little more exciting with our partner, and I'll tell you that in just a moment. But until then, we are donating 12 cents of every transaction to the Prairie View A&M University Foundation. We also participated in Homecoming Week, where we were out in front of the building all week long, helping to celebrate uh, a week of festivities and celebration for alumni and students of the university. We had the opportunity to interact with many members, many people who live in the community, people who are curious about this new phase of Prairie View FCU, and we're excited for the next homecoming week. We also introduced new upgraded branding, reflecting sort of their traditions, but giving it a fresh, crisp uh, overhaul, embracing our purple and gold. Members of Prairie View FCU now have access to online and mobile banking, mobile deposit, CDs, IRAs, home equity loans, and our competitive day and night credit card program, just to name a few. They've also gained access to our record-breaking 
Z checking product with an interest rate of 5.11%. And more is just around the corner. In addition to the plan remodel that you heard about from Ms. Parker in her report, here are a couple more things we're working on. The purple card was a good step. The next step is to partner with Prairie View A&M University on a Panthers School Spirit debit card. We have an agreement pending with them. It's going through their legal review, but we are cautiously optimistic and have received what we think is a verbal confirmation that they are going to proceed with the program. Once approved, the new PV AMU Panthers card will be our first participating college in our popular School Spirit debit card program. Prairie View University students, faculty, and alumni will be able to show their PV AMU pride while making everyday purchases. Transactions from their Panthers card will generate thousands annually for Prairie View AM A&M student scholarships. In proposing this program to Prairie View University, we looked at our successful program and looked at where we have had partners take this program to new levels. Cypher High School has been our biggest, most successful uh, program on the high school level. And over the last six years, they have produced about $30,000 in funds for their booster club and a rate of about $5.80 per student over those six years. When we take those numbers and we put them over the top of the student body and faculty numbers for Prairie View A&M University, this program has the capability to easily create $130,000 worth of scholarships over six years for students of Prairie View A&M. Additionally, we have also introduced a brand new $1,500 Prairie View A&M scholarship to complement our existing Cypher XU scholarship program, and we have plans for additional ones to be added. New financial workshops that we're offering include car buying, credit card builder, budgeting and financial tips, first time home buying, and plans for an on-campus ATM that will save Prairie View FCU members money on those pesky ATM surcharge fees and provide convenient account access are also in process. Combined with the branch remodel, there's a lot to look forward to at Prairie View Federal Credit Union. Two additional notable achievements this past year. Cypher FCU received the first $50,000 installment of a $1.75 million payroll tax credit for preserving jobs during the pandemic. During the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, the government offered a program to reward employers who had high expenses for maintaining jobs and keeping people working. Credit's HR team quickly began exploring this program, looked at alternative partners to find the most cost-effective way to do it, and after determining that we had eligibility for up to $1.75 million in refunds of payroll taxes paid, determined that we were not willing to share a large portion with a outside provider. So our HR team got to work and they developed the data and submitted the application. And this $50,000 that we're reporting for 2022 is already included in the financial reports that we provided earlier. Excitingly, the additional $1.7 million has been received in 2023 and will appear in our 2023 financial results that we will report next year. Cypher Federal Credit Union Service quality scores also reached new highs. During 2022, our net promoter scores remained in the top percentile of financial institutions nationwide and climbed to new records for CFSU during the year. Cypher Federal Credit Union ended the year in 2021 at 67.98% but quickly moved into the low to mid 70s throughout 2022 and ended the year at 74.73%. Initiatives in this area include restating our service quality standards to better align with the vocabulary of our core values and our vision for members and the top to bottom organizational integration of how are you. We have cultivated very strong member experience and lending teams with excellent mid-level managers who have kept their focus on providing hospitality caliber service, minimizing wait times, providing knowledgeable service, 
and genuinely caring about our members in each interaction. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge Ms. Georgette Salazar, VP of Member Experience, who has led many of these initiatives. Thank you. Under community involvement, uh, Credit Union has had a longstanding commitment to serve the community, including supporting non local nonprofits as well as volunteer service. For the past several years, we've had a commitment of at least $50,000 in community support and 1,000 volunteer hours by our employees during each year. I'm excited to report that we've exceeded that objective in each of the last several years. During 2022, one of the exciting programs that we had the opportunity to uh, fulfill is our classroom makeover contest. Winners received $500 checks to make over their classrooms to create a more fun, inviting, and productive learning environment for their students. The 2002 winners were Lisa Hayes from Lampkin Elementary, who won $500, Melinda Abel from Arnold Middle School, who also won $500, and a third $500 winner, Paula Beltran of Cypress Ridge High School. What started as a um, difficulty in selecting a winner because there were so many phenomenal entries has now just become a standing tradition. We also select three runners up each year. We selected Stacy Hatcher from Bain Elementary School who won $150, Shaylin Nicholson who also won $150 from Truett Middle School, and Kelsey Spurgeon from Cypress Ridge High School who also received $150. In addition to classroom makeovers, the credit union awarded 10 student scholarships, including six CFSU funded ones and four through private partnerships with individuals or foundations. The 2022 winners included $1,500 through our Cypher FCU Community Scholarship to Ryan Linton, another $1,500 through that same scholarship through Stephen Nguyen, $1,500 to Chuka Nuabu, and then we also had winners in our membership category, and then we had a partnership with the Parton Foundation who has three scholarships, one for $1,000, the Charles Galloway Memorial Scholarship. The winner of that award was Kayla Bowie. $1,000 was awarded to Ashley Curian, who received the Bob Harton Integrity Scholarship. And $1,000 for the Darren Goforth Memorial Scholarship went to Artrell Perry. It has also been a sweet and uh, heartbreaking opportunity to award a student each of the last few years a scholarship in the name of my wife. And last year's winner was Haley Perez, who won $2,000. <laughs> On behalf of the Board of Directors, the executive team, and the entire Cypher FCU family, I want to thank you. It is a privilege to serve you and to support the residential communities across Harris and Waller County, our schools and small businesses, the students and faculty of Prairie View University, employees of Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District, and so many local nonprofit organizations. It's a privilege to write good into your stories. I will now turn over the microphone to Ms. Tamika Ramsey from our supervisor committee, who will give the annual supervisory committee report. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tamika Ramsey, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and what an exciting time to be a part of Cypher Federal Credit Union. We're executing on the 10-year plan, moving into the Prairie View community, even as a HBCU grad. I don't wear purple and gold, but I will happily swipe my purple card in HBCU camaraderie spirit um, and really just continuing to provide great service each and every time our members go into the branch. Um, as mentioned earlier, our chairman of the supervisory committee couldn't be with us today. So I am presenting to you our supervisory committee report. Um, our supervisory committee last year in 2022 consisted of four members. The role of our committee is to work with the board of directors and our executive leadership team and to ensure that the credit union adheres to regulations, policies, and generally accepted accounting principles, which have been established to safeguard the credit union's assets. The supervisory committee oversees internal 
and external audit activity. For 2022, the credit union's independent external audit was conducted by the firm Nearman, Maynard, and Value, a certified public accounting and consulting firm. This audit recently concluded with no adjusted entries or recommendations. Further, the auditors determined that in their opinion, the credit union's financial statements for 2022 present fairly, in all material respect, the financial position of SciFair Federal Credit Union. In addition to the external CPA audit, the National Credit Union Administration conducts periodic regulatory examinations. The most recent NCUA exam was completed in January 2022 for the period ending September 30th, 2021. Based on the findings of the credit union's external audits, internal audits, and examinations by federal regulators, I'm happy to report that the strong internal processes are in evidence and the posted 2022 financials for SciFair Federal Credit Union have been affirmed by independent experts. The credit union is diligent with efforts to comply with all applicable laws and regulations. And reports have been filed with the committee during this past year that reflect sound business practices and processes. On behalf of the entire supervisory committee, we appreciate the opportunity to represent your interests. That concludes my report. I would now like to introduce Mrs. Erwan Wilson, who will give the nominating committee report. Thank you so much, Tamika. That was uh, a beautiful report. And thank all of you for coming out here tonight to hear the many accomplishments of our SciFair Federal Credit Union. It, this past October, our credit union's board chair, Ms. Barker, uh, appointed the nominating committee uh, to begin evaluating candidates for uh, expiring terms on the credit union's board of directors and any open positions. Uh, for a second year in a row, I've chaired this committee and I've enjoyed it. Uh, as Ms. Parker shared earlier, our SciFair Federal Credit Union Board of Directors consists of nine volunteer directors elected from the credit union uh, membership. Board members are elected for three-year terms, and their terms are staggered to ensure continuity and oversight of governance. When a board member leaves before completing their term, a replacement candidate uh, may be appointed by the board chairman to serve until the next annual meeting, tonight's meeting, where they may stand for election by the members. If elected, the candidate will complete the years remaining on the original three-year term. This year's nominating committee received nomination applications from two previously uh, elected board members whose current terms are expiring and who expressed an interest in continuing to serve the membership. Those members are Dr. Debbie Emery and Ms. Dina Morgan. Dr. Emery currently uh, serves as our board vice chair, and Ms. Morgan currently serves as our board treasurer. Additionally, the committee also received applications from two currently uh, appointed board members who expressed interest in continuing to serve past their expiration of their temporary appointments. And we're pleased about this. Those candidates are Mr. Harold Rowe and Mr. Noel uh, Yapes. Mr. Rowe previously served several years on the board uh, as an elected member, including as past chairman of the board before um, stepping off in 2017. Mr. Yetpes previously served on our credit union supervisory committee before his appointment to the board this past fall. The committee also developed and evaluated additional prospects uh, who responded to notices either from our web, the credit union's webpage, uh, social media, and uh, word of mouth recommendations. In conjunction with an independent outside consultant firm of Mitchell, Stankovic, and Associates, the committee conducted a comprehensive vetting process 
of interested candidates, including skills, demographic assessment, um, candidate interviews, and routine background checks. Ahead of the election notice deadline this past December, the nominating committee reached a unanimous decision for this year's nominees and nominated to fill a, a three-year term on the board were Mr. Harold Rowe, Dr. Debbie Emery, and uh, Ms. Dina Morgan. Additionally, uh, Mr. Uh, Noel uh, Yapas was nominated to fill the two remaining uh, years on the position he's currently appointed to. All four nominees have done an exemplary job in their role as board members, and they have contributed significantly to other credit unions' governments. Uh, when you came in tonight, I hope you were given a copy of the candidate's bios uh, in your packet where you can read about the qualifications of each of these nominees. As directed by our bylaws, a notice of tonight's annual meeting and associate, associated uh, elections was mailed to all of our uh, site fair federal credit union members. One of my neighbors uh, assured me today that she received hers. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so that was mailed out during the first week of January, along with information describing how additional nominations could be uh, made by petition with signatures of 1% of the credit union eligible um, members. The February 10th deadline passed without any additional nominations. So, in accordance with our bylaws, when only one member is nominated for an open position, the nominees from the nominating nomination committee shall be deemed elected by general consent to the position and for the term that was designated when originally making their nomination. To affirm the election of these four um, candidates, I'd like to call for a motion uh, from the floor to approve the election of the four nominees. Do I have a motion to amend? Do I second? All right, so we will need to vote on this. All in favor of the motion, can you please raise your hand and say aye? Aye. Any opposed? Great. So, with a quorum of members present at this duly held annual meeting, the motion passes affirming the election of these four nominees to the Credit Unions Board. So, please join me in congratulating Harold, Debbie, Dina, and Noel. And let's thank them for their continued service on behalf of the Credit Unions membership. I'm almost finished, so hold on. <laughs> Lastly, after the credit union sent the required notices for, the t for tonight's elections and the annual meeting with the December 31st um, statements, two of our precious credit union board members submitted notice that they would be stepping off of the board. Those members were um, Mr. John Price and Ms. Katrina Matthews. We would like to thank, and Ms. Matthews is right here supporting us, we would like to thank both Ms. Matthews and Mr. Price for their volunteer service and their contributions to the governance for the Cypher Federal Credit Union. Let's give her a big round of applause. So, as a result of these openings, we got a lot of practice. The nominating committee was once again engaged to develop and vet prospective board candidates. However, with the annual uh, board elections already in process and required deadlines for notification already passed, the committee determined that it was not possible to add candidates to tonight's board elections. Additionally, the committee always seeks to conduct a high quality candidate vetting process and that process typically takes uh, a few months from beginning to end. With those factors in mind, the committee began its work with the objective of recommending two candidates for temporary appointment to the board following tonight's annual meeting. According to our bylaws, when a board member is appointed to fill a vacant position, they can only serve until the next annual meeting. 
At that time, they must stand for election by the credit union's members. Over the past few months, the nominating committee has worked diligently to develop the list of prospective candidates, collect application packets from each of them, uh, schedule interviews uh, and hold, schedule and hold interviews, and vet their qualifications and conduct background checks to formulate rec recommendations for these positions. I'm happy to report that that process has been completed and the committee's recommendations have been filed with the board. They will be taking action on this uh, at their next board meeting, at our next board meeting. Recommended for appointment to the board will be uh, Mrs. Reagan Pugh and Dr. Cheryl Henry. Both of these ladies are here, members are here. Can y'all stand to be recognized? Thank you. Let me tell you a little bit about them. They're awesome. Uh, Ms. Reagan Pugh has worked in the credit union industry for over 15 years and is a longtime credit union member. She has held several leadership positions in financial services industry, including assistant vice president and vice president uh, of operations and recruiting. Today, Ms. Pugh serves as an executive search recruiter for Cornerstone League, League aiding credit unions across multiple states, I might add, in identifying and acquiring highly qualified senior leadership candidates for their opening. She and her family reside here in Site Fair, where her daughter attended school and played sports <laughs> before graduating. And so Ms. Pugh holds a bachelor's degree in business management. Dr. Cheryl Henry, has served as principal of Cypress Springs High School and Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District since 2015 and has worked as an educator for 34 years. Prior to becoming principal at Cy Springs, Cheryl served as principal at Campbell Middle School, also in Cy Fair. Her other positions, uh, Dean of Students, Assistant Principal, uh, Director of Instruction in Los Angeles and in Houston, uh, Dr. Henry received her bachelor's degree from UCLA, her master's from Stanford, and her doctorate from uh, Texas A&M University. Woo -hoo. And Dr. Henry has served as a consultant for the principal certification uh, preparation program at Prairie View A&M University, and has also served as an adjunct lecturer at the University of Houston. We look forward to welcoming both appointees to the board ahead of next year's election notice deadline. And the nominating committee plans to review both candidates and recommend them for election by the credit union's membership at the next annual meeting. It has been my sincere pleasure to serve on this committee this year. And that concludes our nominating committee report. I'd like to turn the floor over to Mr. Dickey. There's always a degree uh, that I feel that we are sort of bait and switch where we uh, tempt people to come and join us on the board of directors and then we give them a whole bunch to do and then we don't pay them anything. And at least tonight there's a little bit of food that kind of goes with it. But uh, Erwan is uh, a testament to that bait and switch uh, because she uh, sort of by process of elimination, the quality of her leadership, the skills that she would bring to it, she was uh, thrust into being the nominating committee, committee chair a year ago and somehow ended up with a lifelong appointment to that position. Uh, but we, and then everybody decided to scuttle the ship uh, and, and make you keep continue to work. So we want to thank you for all your hard work and the committee's work. I want to uh also acknowledge uh and and she did it brilliantly but i have a little special uh, token of appreciation uh, we had four board members and supervisory committee members who completed their service during the last year and uh, i'm trying to think if there's an exception to this all of them stepped off because life was just really busy and full and they needed to step away for a little while and so in testament to that only one of them was able to make it tonight because the other three still can't, don't have time to come play with us. 
But I would like to take a moment. Ms. Katrina Moore. As we start the final portions of our agenda this evening, please remember that if you have any questions during the business section, you can either step up and ask a question here at one of the microphones on either side of the aisles, uh, or if you're online, you can type your question in the meeting chat window or use the raise hand option in the virtual meeting and we'll get your questions answered. At this time, is there any old business to come before this meeting? Seeing none, we will proceed to new business. Is there any new business to come before this meeting? We have a question online. I like that. It makes it worthwhile to have that additional component when you know that people are engaged in using it. Mr. Sean Orth Orthober, VP of Marketing, is going to read the question. All right, are we on? Okay, great. Um, so we've got online, Curtis has a question here in chat. Um, he asks, how has increased interest rates impacted the credit union's tangible equity? And have borrowing lines of credit been negatively affected? Um, then he continues on, since the prior year ended, cash has declined 56% or $36 million and appears it was used to fund loan growth as total loans increased 15.7% or 29.2 million. Given increased borrowing costs, what is driving the loan growth and is this new business more so consumer or commercial? So just let me know if you need me to repeat uh, the first part and then the second part. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a first pass at the answer and then I'm also gonna then pause and make sure that either uh, if he would indicate whether or not I have fully answered his question, uh, or two, if there's anything he'd like to, to ask as a follow-up. Um, the, the first thought that comes to my mind is, uh, I made reference to it a little bit in my report, but at the, uh, around the end of 2019, we were sitting at about $163 million, excuse me, $263 million in assets. And in the months that transpired between the end of 2019, and you saw that spike in March of 2022, we grew $83 million in deposits. And so we went from essentially um, a, a critical measure for us is for every dollar of deposit, how many pennies are out the door in loans to members. And uh, the more uh, that those dollars are being used to provide quality uh, saving products and, and dividend rates for our, our savings members and low interest rates and, and borrowings for our members who are uh, using credit. Um, the more of those dollars that are, are being used, the better. That $83 million in deposit growth drove our loan to share ratio from the 89% ra range and I believe the bottom that we hit was somewhere around 58, 57%, um, which frustratingly was where we started in 2012 when we began our initiatives to grow our loans and kind of turn those faucets on after the Great Recession. So in a very short window of time, we saw the uh, organization flooded with liquidity. And so over the last, yeah, let me make sure I get the time frame right, about two and a half years, a little bit plus, um, we have made a concerted effort to work both sides of that equation. One, we made very concerted efforts to get those dollars to work with our members. We know that they're buying cars, they're refinancing their homes, they've got credit cards, they, they may have debt that they need to refinance and bring over so that they can lower, lower their overall payments. Most of our membership are finding services somewhere, we want to make sure that we have a high degree of wallet share. So if they're going to borrow someplace, we'd like them to do it with Cypher SCU. That's the principles of a not-for-profit financial cooperative is 
a group of people coming together and collectively saving and borrowing together and, and keeping those costs in check for each other. Um, so we made two efforts, one to grow loans. The second effort was to acknowledge that that money that flooded in, some portion of that was really the product of economic stimulus being provided at the federal level. It was not natural uh, accumulation of savings reserves by our members, uh, and it was a phenomenon that happened to financial institutions across the country. And so some part of that needed to be allowing some of that money to subside and go back out the door. So if $83 million came in, our goal was somewhere in the vicinity of 65 to $68 million we would like to get mobilized in loans to members. And we were comfortable with the idea that maybe $15 million that kind of flowed in unnaturally would hopefully flow out unnaturally and find better homes for it to make sure that we're being good stewards of the balance sheet. We understand that our business is a safety and soundness, stability, uh, reputation business. And so we need to make sure we have good balance between those factors. And while it's uh, very, um, it, 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 it can be an inclination to sort of swell up your chest and be really proud that we are now $15 million higher in assets. Uh, that's a number we often use as a measurement of the size of the organization. If it's not good growth for the credit union, if it's not healthy for the credit union, our first objective is to be good balance sheet managers and make sure that the credit union is safe and sound. And so some of what our member is seeing go out the door is intended, um, intended actions. It's it been intentional balance sheet management, asset liability management strategy by the organization with participation of the board, senior management, to allow some of that to subside while we have worked very hard on growing our loans. And you can see both of those things happening in our balance sheet. So it's very intentional actions by the credit union. So that's one aspect. The second aspect that I would think of is, I think the question is probably being prompted by what is making national headlines with SVB Bank, their liquidity crunch, several other um, for-profit institutions who have found themselves in liquidity uh, pinches and has caused concerns for investors. And, and in the instance of SVB Bank, they actually closed the financial institution or at least put it under conservatorship. Um, we have done a comprehensive analysis. We are so different than those types of entities. Uh, SVB was uh, providing uh, funds for um, venture capital. They were uh, very tied to the technology industry. And um, so they had a very complex balance sheet. And they had worked themselves sort of into a, a concern of reputation uh, with, their mem with their customer base. And suddenly, they saw a run on the bank. In our instance, we still have very strong levels of liquidity, not only in our own deposits and maturing investments that are coming up, loan repayments. We talked earlier about what it takes for us to get $29 million in net loan growth to $80 million in loan production. So it's a very, I say easy, uh, it's easier to turn off the faucet than it is to turn on the faucet, in all honesty, as, as you begin to say, hey, gosh, uh, we $83 million just flooded into the organization over the last several months, and we want to get those dollars de deployed. That's a much more, um, a longer term for the organization to get to getting all those dollars deployed. It's a lot easier to turn those spigots off, stop promoting some of the loans that we're promoting, and to dial back in what we're funding. And that is an immediate source of funds if the credit union never found itself in that situation. Additionally, we have uh, access to roughly about $100 million in various different forms of liquidity between our own investments, our own lines of credit, um, funds from those loan repayments. We've looked at it very strongly. We see absolutely zero liquidity pressure on the credit union. So uh, can you can you provide me any update whether or not that answers the question for the member? <laughs> or prompted new questions from the folks who are in the room? I just said thank you, so I believe that probably answered it. And then we can also maybe, do you want me to give him an email that in case that he's got further questions, he can reach out and, yeah. uh, through that means. 
But yeah, he said that answers the question. The, one of the things we didn't mention in the report, which is hard to believe because I think we told you about it, it, almost everything we did last year, uh, we had a phenomenal VP of Finance and Accounting join our organization, Mr. Castillo, and uh, he's very knowledgeable. He's done several reports and analysis on the subject and provided updates to the executive team and board, and I know that uh, he'd be happy to help me uh, fill in anything that uh, I may have not uh, provided in that response to uh, our members. Are there any other questions? With that, we will uh, go to our closing remarks. SciFair FCU is an organization that is committed to helping our members and our neighbors to overcome financial challenges, to reach for and attain their financial goals, and to have a knowledgeable collaborator through every step. Our board, executive team, and staff seek to embody our organizational vision and values every day to write good into the life stories around us. Put more simply, you, our loyal Cypher SU members and new members of the Cypher SU family at our Prairie View division, you are the reason we exist and why we do what we do. Whether you attended in person this evening or watched online, I want to thank you for participating with Cypher Federal Credit Union's look back at the results of 2022. A copy of our full 2022 annual report is available on our website at cypherfcu.org. Uh, it's a great uh, synopsis of everything that happened last year, our community involvement, our heart for the community, uh, products and services. So I encourage you to either read the copy you got tonight or uh, stop on, on our website and, uh, and download it. It's, it's a great reflection of the organization. As a member-owned financial cooperative, your involvement in our annual meeting in electing members to represent you on the Credit Union's Board of Directors, for the accounts, goals, and business that you entrust to us, they are greatly appreciated. We know you have many financial services choices, and we strive to earn your business every day. Please stay safe and well, and let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. We are always interested in how are you? With no further business to come before the group, we are adjourned by acclamation. Have a good evening and drive safe.